Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about rotation, uh, in particular uh, uniform rotation with constant angular uh, speed. Um, I think this particular theme is um, not paid a lot of attention during the regular courses of uh, classical physics. So I would like to spend some time on concepts of this rotation and especially rotation which is relative to another rotation which is kind of complicated but nevertheless it needs to be addressed. Now this particular lecture and many others actually are part of the Physics for Teens course presented on Unizor.com website. I suggest you to watch the lecture from this we website because it contains lots of notes. Every lecture has notes, basically like a textbook. Uh, the site is free, no, no, no advertisement, so feel free. Okay, so again, our um, ultimate purpose of this particular lecture is to learn something about rotation around some axis, whereas this axis itself is rotating around another axis, something like this. Well, these axes are considered to be parallel for simplicity, and obviously I basically consider the plane which is perpendicular to these axes of rotation, and everything will be actually happening inside these planes, which I will use my whiteboard, obviously, to, to represent. So z coordinate is always equal to zero, now, before um, going into the complexity of this r relative rotation, let's just again, maybe one more time, maybe it's a repetition, but still it's important, address a couple of concepts related to rotation. In particular, angular uh, speed, um, uh, velocity vector of rotation, and uh, linear speed. Now, um, First of all, angular speed. If you are um, having an object which is rotating, let's say there is a radius r here, it rotates uniformly. Now, what does it mean? It means that the um, length of the arc covered during the time t is always proportional to time t with the same coefficient of proportionality. And that coefficient is called angular velocity. Now, in other uh, representation, if this angle is phi of t, which describes location of the point on the circle, on the trajectory, um, then I can say that this is um, position, basically. It defines the position of, of the object. Now, obviously, um, this function can be differentiated by time, and that means that I'm um, basically trying to find instantaneous average speed from moment from t to t plus delta t. During this time, my angle moved from phi of t to phi of t plus delta t, and if I will subtract one from another, that's the angle uh, difference, and that's basically how much my angle has increased during this delta t moment, and if I divide it by the time, which is delta t actually, I will have average speed from t from t to t plus wt, uh, from t plus delta t. And if I will uh, use the infinitesimal delta t, I will basically get my first derivative of, uh, of the phi function. Now, I assume in all the problems which we will consider, I assume that this is equal to constant, in which case phi of t is equal to omega t if at moment t I was at angle zero, which is here. So this is our normal assumption, and this is basically what 
um, angular velocity is. We will measure it in radians per unit of time. Um, so, uh, in this particular case, for instance, if my full circle is um, is uh, uh, accomplished in in the time t, then my angular velocity is this. So this is the time uh, which it takes for object go to go one full circle, and one full circle is two pi radians. So this is my. <coughs> Now, if on the other hand, object makes n uh, rotations per unit of time, that means the angle would be 2 pi times n and per unit of time, so divided by t. So if I know that I'm making, let's say, um, 25 rotations per second, then uh, t is equal to 1 second and 25 rotations would be 25 times 2 pi would be 50 pi and that would be my speed in radians per second okay so angular speed we got <coughs> now <coughs> now going from this picture if this angle is phi of t then from geometry you know that the length of the arc is equal to r times phi of t where phi is angle in radians always radians remember it not degrees or anything okay so that's plain geometry obviously of the circle that that we have to know now if this is true then I can always find um, the average speed during which I have covered this particular distance L, right? So that's the distance divided by time. Now, again, as in case of angular speed, what I should actually do, um, I should take what's my L of t plus delta t. This is the distance I covered uh, by the time t plus delta t, subtract L of t and divide by delta t, which is t plus delta t minus t. So I, my distance incre increment, I divide by time increment, and that's my average linear speed as I'm going along this curve, uh, how much real distance I have covered along this curve, if I measure it, during the time delta t. And if I will divide one by another, that's an average speed. And again, if delta t goes to zero, I will have my uh, instantaneous um, speed along this um, trajectory. Now, obviously, since this is r omega t, and I have this is my derivative of this function, so my um, linear speed would be equal to r uh, times angular speed. So this is my linear speed as I'm moving along along the curve. Now what is um, the real velocity vector in this particular case? Well, velocity vector is a vector which is directed towards uh, my uh, direction of the movement and it has certain uh, magnitude and how do I obtain my velocity vector well first of all we are talking about the system of coordinates so let's say this is x this is y this is position so what's my position vector of time t well if this is r and this is phi or phi is equal to omega t, then I can say that my x coordinate is equal to r times cosine of angle phi, which is omega t, and my y coordinate is equal to r sine 
omega t. So that's the position vector. Now, we talked about many times, if I have a motion, this is basically a definition of the motion. This is how my motion occurs. I have a function of time for both coordinates. Now, if I want to know the velocity vector, well, that's the derivative of the position, right? Which is um, minus r uh, sine, and in, inside would be w, sine of omega t. That's my derivative from r cosine omega t. Now, in inner function, outer function, so the uh, um, derivative of the outer function is minus sine. This is just a coefficient r. And inner function, I have to uh, have the uh, derivative of the omega t, and that would be omega. And here, similarly, I will have r, I will have omega and cosine of omega t. So that's my uh, velocity vector. Okay, first of all, what is the norm? What is the magnitude of the velocity vector? Well, that's uh, x, squ x squared plus y squared, right? The velocity is a vector, and the, if I will have x and y coordinates of the vector, uh, square root of x squared plus y squared is the magnitude, right? If I, we have a vector, this is x, this is y, magnitude, the theorem of Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so r square, um, uh, uh, this square plus this square. Okay, obviously it would be square root of r square omega square sine square of omega t plus cosine square of omega t now this is one sine square plus cosine square regardless of the angle and the square root of this would be r omega now look at this so the magnitude of the velocity vector is equal to linear speed of the vector as it moves uh, along the curve. Well, that's not a surprise, obviously. Now, another property, again, very obvious is now, if you will do the scalar product of these two, what it will be. Minus r square <coughs> minus r square omega sine cosine and plus r square sine cosine omega. So that would be zero. Now what does it mean? It means that vector of velocity is perpendicular to vector of position. Position vector is here to the point. So velocity is tangential. So, that's basically all we wanted to know about the rotation. Angular velocity, linear, uh, uh, sorry, angular speed is better. Um, uh, linear speed, because these are scalars, they're not vectors. And finally, the velocity vector, which can be expressed in these coordinates, and we know that this vector is uh, tangential to the circle because it's perpendicular to the radius. Now let's talk about relative rotation I promised in the very beginning. So here is the picture. So, this is a fixed center, fixed to the Earth, let's say. Now, this is the rod which is um, rotating. It has radius r and a constant uh, angular speed omega. Now, let's call this point A. So, I will use 
omega a here. Now, I have a point B. Now, this is a point around which my disk can actually rotate. Now, it has a radius r, lowercase r, and the angular speed is also constant, but it's different. So my task is basically find out uh, the position and velocity uh, of uh, point B. All right. Now, <coughs> what um, what I will do is just use exactly the same. Um, uh, approach as I did with rotation of one one particular uh, uh, object, but now I will have to to do basically um, the combined um, combined uh, motion, uh, which I can define one of them separately from another, and then. If you remember, if you have one, let's say, system of coordinates and another system of coordinates which is moving relative to the first one. I can always find the position of the point in the original one if I will add this to this. Right? So all I need is how my origin of the new system, of the moving system, moves relative to this one as long as the axes are parallel. So that's what I will use. Okay. So, as the time goes by, what is my uh, position vector for A? It depends on time, obviously. Well, obviously my system of coordinates is related to this O, right? And let's assume that in the very beginning my A is on the x-axis, so initial angle is zero, in which case it's equal to r cosine uh, omega a t r sine omega a t. That's my coordinates. Okay, now let's talk about point B. Again, we will assume that point B in the very beginning as t is equal to zero is here, horizontal. So, if I will have position of the point B relative to point A, point B relative to point A, so I assume there is this system of coordinates. This is lowercase r, because that's the radius of the lower, cosine omega b t, now I'm using its own uh, rotation, and r sine omega b comma t. So that's position of point b relative to system of coordinate related to center of the disk with axis parallel to these ones. So all I have to do is, if I want to find coordinates of point B in original system, unconditional, it's basically coordinates of A plus coordinates of A, B. Because the vector from here to here is equal to vector from here to here plus vector from here to here, right? Which basically gives me the expression, the expression of coordinates of the point B in original uh, fixed system of coordinates. So this basically represents my relative rotation. It's a rotation over rotation. This rotation is relative to this rotation. Now this combined motion gives me, well, obvious formulas. Uh, it's equal to what? Uh, 
r cosine om, uh, omega a t uh, plus lowercase r cosine omega b t. That's my x coordinate and the y coordinate correspondingly with the sign. Now I can find the velocity of this by, by just differentiating by, um, by the time t. And I will have the velocity and um, let me try to explicitly do this. So velocity would be uh, velocity of point B relative to original system of coordinates. Obviously it's again it's equal to the sum of velocities but anyway let me just differentiate this. So this would be R minus because it's cosine uh, A sine omega a t plus actually minus uh, r lowercase r omega b sine omega b t that's my x coordinate of the velocity <coughs> and my y coordinate would be so I will have signs there, right? So it would be r omega a uh, cosine of omega a t plus lowercase r omega b cosine of omega b t. Now, what is this at moment zero? So whenever my disk is here, at moment t, my disk is here. That's what my A point and my B is here. So what happens in this particular case? Well, my velocity vector of zero is equal to zero and zero. Sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one, so I will have r omega a plus r omega lowercase r. Omega b. That's the magnitude. Well, that's not just the magnitude. This is basically the vector itself. I have x and y coordinates. But what's interesting is What's the direction of this vector? The x-coordinate is zero, right? So the direction is obviously this. What's also interesting is that this is a sum of two things. This is the vector of this movement relative to zero. And this is this movement of b relative to a. So whenever we start the motion, it t is equal to zero. I never just started. My connection between O and A move almost vertically up, almost straight line, right? And connection from A to B also moves straight up. So basically it's like we have um, a, an old um, uniform motion. Let's say you have a, a platform and uh, moving, let's say, straight. And then the person on that uh, platform moving in exactly the same direction. You basically add the speeds, right? We were covering this before in relative motion um, material. So this is exactly the same thing, but uh, applied to rotation, because whenever they are aligned this way, uh, I can always say that these are directed along the same uh, direction, and that's why it's just plain addition of their um, linear speeds because the linear speed is vertical uh, direction is vertical and, and linear speeds are basically adding together because they are in the same direction <coughs>
Well, that's all I wanted to talk about as far as the relative um, rotation is. Um, this is maybe a little bit more involved uh, than whenever you're uh, considering the uniform motion along the straight line with constant velocity. But in many aspects, the uniform rotation, which means omega is constant, as we are considering, and probably in all the problems which we will deal with, we will have rotation as a uniform um, motion, most likely. Um, it's equivalent in some way, but instead of the regular velocity, you have to use the angular velocity, and then the analogy would be quite, quite obvious. All right. That's it for today. Uh, I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. It's like a textbook. Uh, after you have uh, listened to this lecture, that would be very easy reading for you. That's always helpful. And it's all on unisor.com. Um, the direction to this lecture, by the way, is uh, from unisor.com. You have physics 14, then mechanics, then part of the mechanics, which is called kinematics. And then you have uh, frames of references. And that's one of the lectures in this particular um, section. All right, that's it. Thanks very much. Good luck.